Heidi ho there friends and neighbors Bobby here today hey folks today I had the blower motor off of my wood stove I took it off and I brought it out here to the garage because I'm gonna disassemble it to see if I can make it faster okay it seems like it doesn't blow quite as strong as it used to so I figured I would uh, bring it out here see if I can remove the motor from the squirrel cage and see if there's a bearing or something that I can lube up or maybe clean something, make it a little bit faster. We're going to give it a try. Don't know if it'll work or not, but I brought you along with me to see if it'll work. And hopefully if it does, it'll be a video and it can help you too. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to plug this thing in. And I'll let you hear what it sounds like. That's what you can see there. I mean, it doesn't sound like it has a bearing or anything like that. Uh, wrong with it or anything. I mean, it runs pretty quietly. It's moving there pretty good. I actually feel a little bit better than I thought it, thought it would be. It just seems like it used to do a little bit better. So, I'm still going to take this thing off and see what I can do with it. So let me go ahead and unplug it. And there's just two screws here on the back. Alrighty. Let's pull these two screws out right quick and Maybe we can expose this sucker. I'm gonna put a little scratch just so I get this thing clocked right. So it's, I'm gonna put a little scribe, a little mark on here, just so I line this thing back up in case there's other places to mount it. Okay, let's see here. There we go. There's our little squirrel cage. Okay. Well, hmm. A lot of play in the motor that way. I don't know if that really matters or does anything or not. None of these look like they're bent or anything. Cause I remember when the kids were little, sometimes they threw stuff down inside here. I think I had to get some little crayons or something out of here one time. I think what I will do, guys, is I will take... This looks like there's a lot of... Uh, dust and stuff, like, built up on here. Looks like maybe some, I don't know, pet hair or something. Something kind of hairy, sort of. I don't know what that is because we don't have an indoor pet. But maybe the people that lived here before many, many years ago did. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to dig that. I'm going to try to clean clean the little cage out around here. There's some dirt right in here, too. I'm going to try to clean that. I don't think I'm going to take the motor apart. I think you'd have to unclip this to pull this back cover off and... I don't think all that's really worth doing because I don't have anything to fix anything in there anyway. Uh, only thing I was thinking I could do is maybe lubricate the back bearing, but it doesn't sound like it turns pretty freely and I don't hear anything scrubbing. So I think I'm just going to clean the cage, squirrel cage up here and see if that does any better, folks. So stay tuned. What I'm doing is just taking my straight blade screwdriver here and reaching down here on the inside here. And there's like some dust and crud that's built up down here up again. As you can see, I'm releasing all those pieces of it right there. So I'm going to get all this stuff loosened up and then I will try to see if I can dump it out of here. Let's see how much has come out already. As you can see, we're already getting <clears throat> that much dust and crud there. So surely that's, uh, by removing that, we should be helping the ability for this fan to move air, I would think. So I'm going to finish cleaning this up, guys. I'll just keep working at it, picking away at it. And then we'll hook it back up and see if there's any difference. As you can see, I've got quite the pile of uh, debris here that has come out of this thing. I mean, you can see that's quite a bit of junk that was inside there. Surely that had something to do with uh, reducing a little bit of the CFMs that this fan would be able to uh, produce. 
So I'm actually hopeful here that we have uh, done something good. I'm going to get the compressor fired up and blow it out real nicely. And here's another thing, folks, um, I failed to mention. This is actually the contact point in which the blower actually bolts up to the stove. And you can see that the flange is bent here, okay? And evidently, I was probably losing a lot of air in between here. So I'm going to try to, um, oh, and I will tell you this too. The gasket that was in between here was just a an old sanding disc. And I think I did that years ago, if I remember correctly now. I took an old sanding disc and cut the center of it out. And the center is actually cut smaller, so that was definitely causing some um, bad airflow here. I was restricting it. So I think that was probably the main problem with this thing. I think I have some gasket material around here somewhere. If I can find it, I'm going to cut me a nice nice gasket to put on here and actually straighten this flange up too and see if I can get this thing sealing up better up against the uh, stove as well. So let me uh, get the air compressor fired up. We're going to blow this thing out, put it back together, and see if we can get a gasket for it. Okay, that squirrel cage is cleaned out about the best I can get it. I did notice that this little uh, air horn here, this cover that goes over, it's got some dust and crud inside here. So I've got a rag here with a little bit of linseed oil on it. So whatever sticks to it should stick to it. Pull that dust and crud out of there. I'm just going to kind of keep wiping this until I get the inside of it nice and clean as well. And then we'll uh, put this sucker back together. Okay, folks, one thing I decided to do is actually rotate my motor um, 180 degrees because I think it'll actually fit better um, back in there on the, on the stove because this thing always kind of sometimes almost rubs the uh, stove itself. So I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. Now, one thing I am going to do, I'm going to take a little bit of this uh, 3M weather strip and adhesive right here. Okay, I got this stuff right here. I'm going to put a thin coat of that on here. It just helps seal up any little air leaks right in between here. Just a ever so thin coat on here. And weather strip and adhesive, folks, is kind of like a glue. So it's, it, it's not going to take a whole long time for it to set up and so it should be nice and hard and firm by tonight when we get ready to use the wood stove because it is going to be kind of chilly tonight and i plan on building another fire so we're going to go ahead and just put this right on here and let that seat down there and that should help seal up any little small air leaks and so forth so i'm going to go and start both of these screws again and then tighten them down with the screwdriver and we'll be about ready to go inside and just check the fit on it. Okay, went inside, done a test fit. And actually by turning this motor, that was the ultimate thing to do because now this whole section is way out of the way. And uh, so that's gonna be a lot better. Um, what I am trying to do now is I'm straightening up this flange. It was bent on one side and um, well, I know why it was bent, because it kind of fit on one of the corners. It actually didn't have a flat surface all the way across. And I don't know if I had hit it with a hammer at one time or someone else did or something. I don't know. I can't remember. I've lived here so long. But uh, what kind of foolishness I've done over the years. But anyway, I want to try to straighten this flange up the best I can. I'm having a hard time finding that gasket material. I may just put this thing back on today with no gasket at all. Just try to get these surfaces meeting as nicely as I can. Two flat surfaces going up against one another is probably not going to allow a whole lot of air past it because nothing's going to be restricting it. Um, I forgot to bring that other little gasket out here. 
Yeah, the other little gasket that I had cut one time out of a piece of um, sandpaper actually wasn't even the right size. It was actually restricting this thing down. So I think I think just by doing what we're doing right here, we're gonna make, make this a lot better. I really do. So I think I about got it like I want it. Let me take a look here. That look, oh, that looks so much better. Look at that, guys. See there? That looks a lot better. I think this side here needs to be bent up just a tad. Grab a hold of it and kind of tweak it a little bit, like so. That looks a lot better. Can you see that, guys? That's looking good. I think I'm gonna go in there and just bolt that right up just like it is and try that out <clears throat> tonight on tonight's fire. One thing I don't like though, this is what I don't like. You see how that wire was put in here and there wasn't like a grommet? I am gonna replace that. I got some of those around here somewhere. Let me find one. We're gonna pull this cover off and rewire this thing and put a little black grommet in here to where just in case this was there ever uh, lay up against there long enough and vibrate and go metal on metal that it wouldn't short and trip the breaker. Okay, so I'm gonna fix that up right quick. Stay tuned and I will find those little grommets. Didn't take long, they're like two steps away up in a cabinet. We got some 3 8 diameter. I don't know why they call them 3 8 I don't know. Looks a lot bigger than 3 8 but I know this is the right size for that size hole. That's gonna work perfectly. So let me uh, <clears throat> see what we need here. Straight blade screwdriver. Make sure you can see what I'm doing, guys. Yep, you can. Straight blade screwdriver. And pull this off. Pull this one off. Oh, they got it grounded right there. Okay. Okay, then. I guess that's okay. As long as you know you got it grounded there. I think I'd rather have it grounded to a. Well, I guess that's okay. I'll just make sure I got it going there as well. So we got a white wire. Going, all right, both of these are black, so I gotta mark these, okay? All right, so this white wire here is going to this black wire. So this is actually a neutral wire right here, okay? And let's see if I can draw some. Here's a, oh, I just happen to have a white <laughs> um, tire crayon right here near near me, guys. So look here. I'm going to take this white tire crayon and color the coating on this wire just so I don't end up messing up here, okay? So we got that out of the way. Let's go ahead and disconnect our black wire from the black wire, which is the hot wire. That's the 110 volts, friends. That's the one that will zap you. Okay, so there we go. So let's pull this out of here, all right? And we got the ground there. So we got all three of those. We got this little grommet, this little cool dewy right here. I'm gonna snap him in place, like so. Then, we're gonna run these wires in here. And then if there's ever a problem, hopefully there won't be a problem. You know what I mean? No problem. I don't like problems. Nobody likes problems. See, I'll actually be able to pull this outer housing on in there. See that grabs? See friends, look here. <clears throat> Once you get past there, with that type of connector, you can't you can't really tug it out. It sort of stays locked in there, okay? So that's what we want. And now that can't rub up against anything metal and end up creating a <clears throat> short, which hopefully will trip your breaker before it burns something up. So safety first, guys. Always safety first, okay? All righty. Black wire from the cord to the black wire coming from the motor. 
twist in a clockwise motion okay and the reason for that folks is when you put your wire nut on there you're going to be turning it in a clockwise motion so it keeps those wires from unraveling if you were going the other way it would want to unravel okay so just tighten that down okay and that should be good enough there and then we will tuck him down out of the way Tuck him down in there, just like so. We're gonna go ahead and take our white wire, our neutral, okay? And let's wrap it with our other black wire coming from the motor that we colored with the white tire crayon because it's the neutral wire. Keeps the motor spinning, I guess, in the right direction. I guess if you hooked it up the other way, the motor wouldn't work right. It wouldn't draw air it would actually just spin it spin it would still work it would just spin the in, the motor in the opposite direction and that would not be the direction that you would need it to go for the uh let's make sure those are nice and it does not seem like it's going to come off of there i think we're good to go i like to twist one more time okay there we go and we're going to tuck him let's bring this ground wire up here right through here tuck this wire down in here tuck the wire nut down in here just like so okay I like that that's good right there now I don't really like this but I don't really know where else I could hook it and since it was already hooked like that for many many years I'm just gonna make sure I get it hooked back like that again I'm going with the cover and the nut I really don't like that because I can't really see if I'm connected good or not hmm I don't like that I think I got it hooked up. I'm going to snug this down. And hopefully, I'm going to take a little peek up in here because I just, I got to see. I'm the type of person I got to know that I got it connected. And it looks like I do. And although I can see, I also have to touch too. Let me go get a pair of needle nose. I got a tug on it too. Make sure I got it. All right, I'm back with my needle nose pliers. I'm reaching down in here. I'm grabbing that green wire and I am tugging on it. And it looks like it's definitely connected, okay? So I'm good. I'm good. I saw it and I touched it. So now let's go ahead and put this screw on this side. I, don't, I still don't like it though, okay? I don't like that, but that's the way it is. I guess the only other thing I could do would be to get out a drill and drill a new hole and to where I could get to it somewhere and find a screw to go into it, but I think we're gonna be okay. And that's nice and snug. That's nice and good there. And look here, folks. That just looks a lot better, don't it? Wire's going in. Can't pull it out. And uh, we don't have to worry about it shorting out up, up against anything, okay? I think I had it held where you couldn't see what I was doing. All right, so now, real quick, let me go ahead and plug it in. Let's make sure it still works. Since I've been tinkering with it, yes, it does. It still works. That seem any faster to you guys? It seems like it is moving a little bit more air. It really does. It may just be me thinking that it is, but I guess cleaning a little bit of that dirt out of there, that could have been slowing it down a little bit. Feels pretty good. Okay. All right, guys, we're going to take this back inside. We're going to hook it up and hope for the best. I want to thank you for watching this video today. 
Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And hopefully you found this helpful. And we'll see you next time. Take care.